Hey, Kenneth Russell here. I'm gonna do a video on how to do it yourself paint your own gu guitar pedal. You know, if you're doing building your own pedal or if I, I guess if you're refinishing an old pedal or whatever, this is the process that I came up with on how to do it that makes the most sense. I've tried a couple things and this is the one that, that works really well for me. All right, well this one here is just a uh, tremolo pedal that I did and uh, from General Guitar Gadgets and came up with that um, little graphic myself. Um, this was a uh, just an AB pedal that I made. Same thing, made up my own graphic with it. And this is one of my ones that I did that it was not successful in the process that I did that. And I'll just go ahead and share that with you real quick of, of how not to do it. Um, on this one, I painted it and then put the graphic on, which I'll, I'll show you how to do later. And then like a polyurethane finish on top of it. And it seemed to work okay and kind of gave it kind of a cool vintage color to it, but then it started to chip off. You can see how half of this pedal uh, is, is chipped off and half of it's still on. So polyurethane is not the best thing for it. I think paint's going to be the way to go. And this is just a little tap tempo pedal that I, I, I make and sometimes I'll sell on, on eBay um, that are really good quality. But uh, anyway, this is, is really what I'm going to kind of uh, show you on how to create this final product. Um, and uh, it's actually not too expensive and creates a very, very good look. So. Let's, uh, let's break it down here, what exactly you're gonna need. So anyway, here's a close up of the, of the pedal that we're gonna look at. And uh, this is what we're going to, to take. We're gonna start here with the left and show you how to just take a basic box and turn it into a good looking graphic. All right, so once you have your, your, your marking marked of where you're going to drill it, um, what you're gonna do is take a small drill bit, like this is like an eighth of an inch size, and drilling a hole with, with the drill bit. I'm not gonna do a demonstration here, I'm gonna just show you the process. Uh, drill a hole, small hole through it, and then work your way up. Uh, kind of go uh, you know, a step or two higher, drill the hole again through it, and then finally you're gonna go to your final size, whatever that is. In order to determine what that is, you can just take whatever part you're going to put in it and just kind of match it up and, and see where how big of a drill bit you're gonna need. Because it just needs to be slightly bigger than, the drill bit needs to be slightly bigger than what you're gonna be putting in the hole. So do your final one through there. And sometimes you might have to like, kind of bend your drill bit around a little bit if it's just barely not fitting and widening up the hole. But you wanna do the smallest one first. Um, otherwise, when you start drilling it in, uh, unless you have a drill press, it's gonna get really like wobbly in there. And you're gonna, it's kind of weird, but you're gonna create like a square-ish type shape instead of a circle. Uh, not really square, but it's gonna have some angles to it you're not gonna want. Then, uh, do the same process on the top of whatever, wherever, anything else that's being plugged in. So if you've got a bunch of, uh, you know, your in and out jack, if, uh, your, your knobs you're putting in there, all need to be drilled out first. Then, once you've got it drilled out, you're gonna have something Kind of like this you know we've got all, all your stuff here and what you're going to want to do is take some sandpaper and sand this guy down and it may not sound like it's that important to do but it really is important to do because this comes somewhat shiny somewhat glossy i don't know if you can kind of see that or not but um i've painted them before and uh, just just with paint without uh sanding it and you can just take your finger and scrape off the paint um, it, uh, there, I think there's some sort of oil substance on this as well too. And so getting down to the metal is really imperative in order to, to, to do it really well. I have one of these guys. It's like a, it's like a drill bit you plug into your drill and when it turns on it like spins real fast and so I'll just kind of hold this on here as it's uh, you know going around and it sands it pretty quickly. But just regular, regular good old sandpaper will, will work as well. You might want to just take a wet cloth and just wipe this down actually before you before you get to the painting, just to make sure there's no residue and no, uh, no metal dust on there. The next step is going to be to prime. Uh, anyway, take your, your primer that you got, make sure you shake it up really, really well. And then what you're going to want to do is just, I, I do two coats of, of primer on this before I, I do anything else. And the first coat is just to kind of get a, a rough base because uh, what you don't want to do is spray too much on it and it starts to drip. Drips are going to make it just look really amateur. Um, so first of all, I'm going to take actually, I'm going to take off the back. I'm going to do that separately. But for this demonstration, I'm going to leave it on here. Um, so, well, I'll, I'll grab one here. Here's another back that I've got here. So what you're going to want to do is uh, just spray. What I do is I spray the side. And I go on the other side, spray the side, and then the ends, 
and then I do the top. And so I was just doing side, side, and top. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not overly generous, but I'm not like holding super back either. I'm just making sure it covers pretty well. But on the first coat, if there's like, you know, the slightest bit of metal showing, I'm not too concerned about it because the second coat is then gonna take care of that. So anyway, you, you spray it a couple, you know, kind of like a, you take your, your spray can and just kind of do like a, like shh. And I usually get back about four or five inches. I think on a spray can they tell you eight inches, but it just sprays too much of a mist. You're getting, you're trying to get in this area. And just, you know, go bah, like shh. Go on this side, shh. The other sides, do that back and forth. Um, you know, maybe one, two, three is like one, uh, one side. And then do that each way. Let it dry for 20 or 30 minutes, and come back and do the exact same thing with the with the top uh, with the, uh, the second coat. Once you've got it primed and it's uh, dried, you can move on to the next step, which is painting. And I will say this: uh, if you are doing it outside, what I do a lot of times is I'll just I'll just take it and I'll just run my fingers um, or a cloth on top of this. Sometimes there might be like a little tiny air bubble, especially on the top is where you really want to do this. And uh, so you can just take a, a cloth and, and rub it down a little bit. It's almost like you're sanding it a little bit with your cloth. And uh, it just, if there's like a speck of dust, it's going to leave a little bit of a bump on there. And since it's just a primer coat, it's okay if you just kind of nick that off a little bit. And even if it's not super smooth, it'll be, even if it kind of leaves, leaves like a little bitty divot, it's going to be okay when it comes down because it's going to be covered. It's going to be covered with the next coat. So, moving on to the this, the color coat of your paint, same exact process, um, except I usually do three coats just to just to make sure. And when you're doing this, uh, I like to to I know when I've got a good coat on there is when I'm spraying, and it just kind of goes like uh, it gives. I'm spraying it back and forth, and I just wait for it to have a good sheen to it. And once it's got a good sheen, then I move on to the other side. But both with the primer and the regular coat, you wanna make sure that these corners are done really well, especially with the primer. For that matter, when you sand, just make sure your edges are sanded really well, because that's gonna make the paint bond to this. Because uh, the edges are where everything is gonna wear out at first. That's the first thing that's gonna start wearing. It's not gonna be you know, on the top and the middle. It's gonna be on the edges of what you're doing. And you know this whole same process happens with with the with this, these bottom pieces too. So I even I even take the time and like I spray the bottom these edges like I spray it like it's a side, and then I go on the top and do that. Even though it'll mostly be covered anyway. So um, next thing you want to do is once this is dried, um, repeat the process three times, and you're going to have uh, a, a pretty good coat of paint on this. All right, at this point, uh, you're gonna have a box that looks something like this. It's been primed, it's been sanded, it's been primed, it's been painted, you've got your color. And uh, one thing you wanna make sure you do is that you pick a bright color for this process because it's going to show up better uh, when you put your graphic on it. Now, if you're doing like a, a black pedal and you're just kind of writing on it with a Sharpie um, and you wanna use like one of those silver Sharpies or whatever to make your, your to label everything, that's fine. Uh, but if you're if you're trying to to use this process, you need to make sure you use a light color so that your black graphic shows up on top of it. So um, at this point, what you want to do is take a one of, one of these guys, and you can go to the store, uh, home or Office Depot, or any of those Staples type places, and pick up a, a clear label. And this is a full sheet label. This is the Avery 18665, and this is a full sheet of, of clear. Uh, paper and it's going to stick onto the pedal. So beforehand, before you even drilled your holes, you had your pedal graphic that you had made, and I've already cut one of these guys out. But you just printed it off on paper, so you know exactly that your graphic is going to fit. And then what I usually do is I'll just kind of cut out like a, a one of them, uh, a little piece like this, and get ready to to cut it to size and put it on the pedal. Now the thing you need to, to remember when you're doing this. Uh, in your design, if you're going to use this process, is I highly recommend that you use a um, black line around the edge. And what that does is it kind of gives a, a reference to the sticker or the label stopping. If I didn't have this black line and I just cut it, um, it it's not going to look really good because it's obvious that you, you just kind of put a sticker on it, if that makes sense. The black line hides the fact 
here's the completed one. It hides the fact that you've got a sticker on there because the line is so close to it. So um, at this point, you just want to go ahead and cut out your label um, very, very precisely. So I just cut as close as I possibly can to this line. And I use a big pair of scissors that I can get a really good long cut on this. So let me just cut this guy out real quick. All right, there you go. Now at this point, we're gonna stick it onto our, uh, our pedal here. Line, okay, so I'm gonna line it up here exactly where I want it to be. And I just realized that as I, I was doing this, this was a, an old sheet that I had used before. And I'm realizing that, I don't know why I saved it, but because I had designed it with a different pedal where I had the, the hole at a different spot. So actually the hole is gonna be right here. So this pedal is not gonna, I'm gonna, once I do this, I'm gonna take it off. So just imagine that the hole is going to be right here and these, these graphics are not uh, misaligned. But once you have it lined up where exactly where you know you want it, take a piece of, of tape and just tape down right there so that you know that's where it's going to lie. Um, once that happens, you wanna take a piece off here and just push it down slightly. You don't have to like cram it down yet. Then you're able to take off this piece and do the same process on here. So this will just kind of slide all the way down here on there just like that. Now the key to getting this to stick all the way across and not come up and where it looks good, I'll take an, a roll of, of uh, tape and I'll just like, here's just some, some uh, Gorilla Tape, and I'll just roll the Gorilla Tape on here like this. And it just kind of ensures that the whole thing is getting pushed down all the way, just like that. Next thing you're gonna do is take and cut out your hole. And with that, you wanna use a some sort of X-Acto knife or some sort of a razor blade that's got a, a sharp edge to it. And I usually just kind of poke through and poke through and then cut around here. And I'm just slicing right around this edge. Now, the thing is, this is not going to be seen because your, um, your button or your knob or whatever that's on here is going to cover this up. So this actually doesn't have to be 100% perfect There you go. We've got our hole right there. So at this point, what you're going to want to do is take out your, you're going to take out your lacquer. And this is the Rust-Oleum lacquer that I was talking about before. And you're going to do two or three coats, depending on how much you want. Uh, obviously three coats is, is better than two, four is better than three. You know, it's, the more you, more coats you put on this, the, the better quality it's going to be. And, uh, but you know, I do the same exact process, you know, do the sides, one, two, three, each side, one, two, three, and then do, then do the tops. Let, uh, whatever the, whatever your, your paint says, 20, 30 minutes in between coats and just really make sure that is a, a lot of paint on there, a lot of lacquer, because that's going to be your ultimate protection. And that's when it's going to keep this guy from popping up. That's when it's going to keep him from, from peeling up over time. And uh, you can see this one's been used. It, the whole thing is held up very, very well, um, especially you know for a used pedal. For you know this being a used pedal, it looks pretty good. You know I've got some some uh, professional pedals that don't look nearly as, as good as this after some use. So uh, once you have this dried, then the next step is just inserting all of your your parts into it. Um, so you you know once you got your parts in there, you put them on there. Now I will say this, I would let it dry for maybe at least a day before I put my parts in because um, as you're tightening down on this guy, like uh, once this is in here and you're tightening down on this, this screw, you know, with a wrench, you don't want it to buckle up this paper, you know, cause this paper here will kind of create like a little, as you're tightening, it'll create like a little crease. And uh, so you want to make sure that's really good and dry and then just tighten it to snug. You know, these aren't, you don't, they're not gonna go anywhere. You know, they. Uh, this one has like a little lock washer on it. You don't have to put it with all your might. So just be careful on, on like over tightening it um, because you don't wanna take off that sticker and you don't wanna take off the paint in your other parts. But well, anyway, there you have it. That's my process for creating my do-it-yourself uh, pedals. 
guitar pedals and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, is this a, an effective method that, that you would use? Um, if, is it worth your time? Is it worth the, the extra effort? Um, and if you have any other ways that you've done it. Uh, I'd love to see some of your pictures of your do-it-yourself pedals that you've made. Uh, you know, send them to me on Google Plus or whatever the case is. So uh, anyway, please like the con this video, comment on it, share it with your friends. Um, hitting that like button really helps kind of boost up the, uh, the hits on this guy. So I really appreciate that. If you've made it this far through it, you probably liked the video. So please hit the like button. And uh, anyway, check out my other vids and I will see you soon. Kenneth Russell, I'm out of here.